All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, let's kill two birds with one stone today. It's Saturday. Uh, I think I might be going to do some, a little bit of highway riding on the CT, and I've got a 13-2 sprocket on there. So this video could uh, serve several purposes. I'm going to put the 14 tooth back on it. Um, of course, the bigger the front sprocket, the faster you can go with less RPMs. So uh, the 13 tooth that's on there now is great for for trail riding for sure. But we're going to be putting some street miles on, I think. Uh, and then if it's a little bit of warm weather, I'm going to take a little road trip. So uh, we're going to stick that back on there. So let's do that. You can pretend that's a 13 tooth. If you want to change to a 13 tooth, it's going to be the exact same thing except for the chain chain uh adjustment's gonna be a little different but let's uh let's go over adjusting the chain on the ct today swapping that sprocket out and setting the chain tension back to the correct uh to and the, the the chain should have about 30 millimeters of slack in it when you got it adjusted correctly while you're sitting on it i guess but uh it's a little bit loose right now um not terribly but this is pretty close to what it should be. You don't want it super tight because it can premature, pre prematurely wear wheel bearings and things like that. But let's uh, let's go over this right quick step by step, guys. And um, maybe it'll, if you guys are thinking about swapping that sprocket out, I'll drop a link below for the 13 tooth. Um, it definitely has helped the bike on the trails big time. But i uh, got a little selection of tools here. Uh, just to go over them right quick, we've got a 19 millimeter and a 14. That'll loosen the the uh, axle shaft so we can move the chain. And then we got some another selection of sockets: 10, 12, 14, 19 will pretty much, and eight and 10 millimeters will pretty sockets will pretty much do the job today. So, all right, let's get started. Let's. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we got to loosen this nut right here first of all. And then we're gonna um, loosen off on this, and let the let's we'll let the axle and wheel move forward. I got it on the center stand, so that that helps a ton. But uh, let's go ahead and get that going. We'll have to hold the other side with the 14, and loosen that one with the 19. Now I like to use a little bit of a long wrench, so you don't have to tug on it so much. But uh, we'll just hold this left side here, break this one loose. This side's got to ratchet wrench so that helps a lot i get that pretty loose to where you don't have any interference now a good thing to do is pay kind of attention where it is you've got these little slots here so uh let's get some light so you guys can see here get my little pocket screwdriver to help point out what's going on all right so if you count from the back one two three four we're pretty much in line with that fourth slot and it's really critical if you want the bike to track correctly it get both sides the same or the wheel will be you know this way or that way if you don't so i mean it's a dirt bike it doesn't have to be to a science you don't have to get the calipers out or anything but let's go ahead and break these loose on both sides this is a 10 and a 12 we'll hold with the 12 back this off some we'll back them off to here and that'll let the wheel go forward Oh, and the older you get, the better these are. The knee pads, excellent. <laughs> uh, young guys won't have to worry about that too much, but every year I need that worse and worse. All right. So we're going to hold this 12 right here, and we'll break this 10 loose. Shouldn't be, I don't really. Basically, the 10 is to keep the 12 from coming back. But give yourself plenty of room. Back those off on both sides. The other side here is the same way. We'll hold the 12. Whoop, that one's already loose. I guess that's uh, kind of just moves forward like that whenever I loosen that axle shaft. Or back, rather. back that off get it out of your way now when we go back with it we'll want to make sure these are in the right spot so i don't know if they have a top and a bottom maybe they do all right we can just slide this forward that's going to give you a ton of slack in your chain so we can we can uh get rid of that or move that front sprocket now, i don't remember let's get you guys set up here where we can 
show you what's going on. All right, I don't know if it's 100% necessary, but this is a hill guard. Let's go ahead and get it out of the way. It's a 14 and a 12, I believe. The 12 is on the bottom. We're just going to use a little 12 millimeter socket here. Get that out of the way. Uh, probably, can sh yeah, we'll shift the shifter down. We can get that off. Get that out of our way. There's going to be a washer in there, I believe, so make sure you don't lose it. It stays in there. That's just a little hill guard. Nice black powder coat on it. Good job, Honda. All right, now this is going to have, I believe, two 8mm. Yeah, so you're going to have one in that hole, one down in the, at the bottom. I don't know if you guys can see it, but we'll get those out. And that'll get your chain uh, sprocket guard out of the way. 8 millimeter with a little extension should do the trick. Now, full disclosure here, my buddy Dan, that helps me at the shop, we uh, we put the 13-2 sprocket on, and he did the front part, and I did the back. So, I can't exactly remember what holds. I believe it has two tins that hold the sprocket on. It may have some kind of retainer to keep them from coming out, but we'll go over it together here. All right, yeah, that's what I thought. It just has little two little tins, um, and it's probably got some tabs that bend over, if I know Honda, and I think I remember him doing that. No? Or, or does it? No, okay. All right, so, Get this around here where you guys can see it really good. All right, so what happens here is this little plate right here turns a few degrees and it's actually splined as well. And that's what holds the sprocket from coming off. So let's get that off out of our way. And like I said, you can pretend this is the 14 stock sprocket. We're putting a 13 on if you want. Like if you guys want to gear it down some, that's fine. Get these out. These probably should probably have a little bit of Loctite on them. Going back, I'm sure we put a little bit so we can do that. So this will turn a few degrees. To line up to come off. Uh, let's see, where's my little magnet get to? You don't necessarily have to have a magnet, but it might make it easier. Okay. So that once you line that up, it'll come right off over that output shaft, counter shaft, we call it. See how it's splined and it'll turn and when these line up that won't let the sprocket come off. Okay. So easiest thing to do here probably make sure you got plenty of slack in your chain. Walk the sprocket off. Just like that. Get it out of the chain. Now, this is going to be the factory one going back. We'll line the splines back up, slide it over. Now, this piece here doesn't really have a front and a back, I don't think. Let's see. Well, it is beveled on the front a little bit. Okay, so the bevel's going to go out, but um, you can see the little imprints where the bolts were before. So we'll go. So if you look there, your your bolt holes aren't lined up, but when you turn it for it to line up, went in a little bit too far with it. Hold on a second here. 
when you turn it for it to line up to, so you can get your bolts in there like that it can't come off and that automatically lines the chain let me get a little bit of blue loctite guys stand by just a second That's the rookie mistake, my fault. So we're going to use this uh, blue. Let's see. I'm going to zoom out for you guys here. We use this little blue Loctite here. You don't need a bunch. Just that's a 20, 24, 300 Loctite. Thread locker blue. The blue will come off easier. All right. Let's put a little bit here. Just to drop. It's all you need. That should be plenty. little bit will do it we'll start those by hand now if you don't have an impact like this it's plenty fine to tighten that with a ratchet you just want to make sure you put the bike in gear or let that down on the ground, the wheel down on the ground, and snug that up pretty good so that you know that don't come off. These little Milwaukee guns. I put a link down below for this gun. This this thing has been great. It's 12 volt Milwaukee impact. I use it every day here at the shop. Really good tool. Okay, so we got that squared away. Now, before we put the chain guard back on let's go ahead and get that chain adjusted up guys and I'll, like i said we'll kill two birds with one stone today here and i'll show you guys how to adjust this chain up so to begin with you can just kind of take your hand and pull the slack out of the chain like that run this up by hand don't even need any tools just yet All right, let's see here. I hope we got. Well, that's pretty good right there. And we're on, uh, still on about the fourth mark, fifth mark. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. It could probably stand to be just a touch tighter. Yeah, that right there, that's probably about 30 millimeters, maybe a little bit. So you basically just want to make sure that you got about an inch and a half slack. Now, when you sit down on this machine, it's going to tighten this chain up. So you could get somebody to sit on it for you and see about how much it, but basically if you got a little bit of slack in it, when you're, when you're sitting on it fully depressed, you're going to be good. So we're right at covering up the, the fifth mark. And that's a pretty good adjustment right there. Let's make sure we're at that same spot on the other side. So it's kicked around a little bit actually on this side. Like we were talking about earlier. Yeah, that's... So I've got five marks showing on the left side, and we've got four marks showing here. We want that straight as we can get it. All right, so we got, let me count them over here. I got my chain pretty good. 
one, two, three, four, four, and just about a screwdriver width on this side. Let's see what we got here with the light. Oh yeah, so we can come just a little bit more. Yeah, that's about perfect. Yep, and the tension's good. So I believe we'll lock it down right there. Now, a lot of people say, go ahead and tighten this, that, whatever first. Once you get the chain where you want it, I'd go ahead and tighten this axle nut down. Then you can snug these against there and they won't come loose. Now, a lot, there's a lot of different opinions on that, but to me, that's just the easiest way to do it. And you know that you got the you got the chain where you want it so when you tighten this no that's going to move anyway so now if you don't torque anything else on the machine i'd probably torque this i'm not really sure what the torque is i've been doing this for 30 years so i've got a pretty good feel for how tight it should be but that don't make it right it really should be torqued i might try to look that up and drop it down in the description below all right now Here's what I'd do. I'd take my 12 and snug that against that just gently. Not doesn't have to be super tight. And then jam this one back tight against it. So hold the 12 and tighten the 10 pretty snug. And that's gonna be there. Now let's do the other side. Get you guys where you can see what's going on. So we ended up with uh about four and a half and we've got about 30 millimeters i think we're good there you like i said you'll want to let it down and just make sure once you sit on it that it's not too tight so like i said let's just take the 12 snug this against that you know that's not going anywhere run that back down tight and then jam this against it, and that'll keep you from losing your adjuster nut. All there is to it, guys. Let's put a little bit of chain lube on this chain here. While we're at it, we got the guards off. I like Bell Ray, but I'm out of Bell Ray, so we're going to use Lucas today. I use this Lucas chain lube here. It's pretty good. Put it right on the inside of the chain and just roll it while you grease it. Get it coming out slowly until you're all the way around. Actually, I think I got it in gear. That's my fault. All right. Oh yeah, there we go couple of rounds and that should be all you need there right there that's good stuff now you can put some lube on the side of the chain if you want to but that's not 100 necessary as long as it i mean you can see how nice and free that's running got that sprocket in there doing its thing now that's pretty good all right let's get our cover back on We'll get, we got these good and tight with Loctite. Tell you what, Honda did a pretty good job on fit and finish of this little bike. I'm pretty impressed with it. I got 2,500 miles on it now, and I'm still as happy with it today as I am the day I got it. So that's a good thing. I don't really think you need any Loctite on these. We'll just snug these up. These little flange bolts that Honda uses don't usually come loose when with just minimal torque on them. All right. Let's wipe this little... heel guard off. Remember not to lose our washer. We got some dirt down here. Can't be having that.
much better. Doesn't have to be perfect, but it nice to get it good and clean. All right, so our top's going up there. Remember about your washer. Loosely tighten that top bolt up. Go ahead and line up your 12 on the bottom. Whoops, didn't mean to hit the camera. All right, all there is to that. I say tighten this 14 first. And then tighten your 12 on the bottom. And if you want to just double check yourself with a ratchet, no problem there. Took me many years to trust a electric impact, but I've kind of gotten where I trust it now. So, all right, guys, all there is to it. So that took what 20 minutes to change a sprocket, and a you could probably do it a lot quicker if you didn't have to film it. So that's not a bad job at all, guys. All there is to it, just a few hand tools, easy job. Get you some good. Uh, let me show you this Bell Ray lube that I use. I like this lube the best. It seems to stick on there. This is a white color to it. They make some blue lube that's great too. But uh, this blaster lube here is more better for like bicycle chains and stuff. And, but this lube here in a pinch works pretty good. That's Lucas's chain lube. It's kind of sticky. But this stuff here is too watery. Uh, I basically use it to do cables, clutch cables and stuff like that. But that's it, guys. Little CT125 sprocket change. Nothing to it. Got the, got the chain adjusted up like it's supposed to be in grease. So we're ready to ride again. All right, guys. Hope that helps. Uh, appreciate you guys watching, riding along with us today. A little Saturday morning here. We got a little few little jobs to do on the bikes and goof off here. Nothing's got to be done. But um, we'll put that 13-2 sprocket back in the box there for if we need it on the trail and i'll take enough tools with me to change it but um like i said the, the rpms are turned up a little bit on the highway at 50 so to keep that tone down we'll put that 14 tooth back on i'm gonna do a little street riding if there's any good weather so nothing to it all right guys drop me a like down below comment if you want to see anything else if you got any questions be glad to answer down there i really appreciate all you guys support we've been doing great with youtube's been really uh suggesting these little ct125 videos and we greatly appreciate that so come back for the next one guys hope you have a good one happy holidays to you it's about mid-december now and uh we're getting ready for santa claus all right guys appreciate it again